we need to write these fractions as decimals. So first we have 3 tenths. As a decimal, that's 0 0.3, because the first digit after the decimal point always tells us how many tenths we have, and we have 0 before the decimal point because we can't have an empty ones column, but we don't have any whole numbers. Now 3 hundredths is written as a decimal as 0 0.03. That's because the second digit after the decimal point is the hundredths digit, and we have 3 hundredths, so we need a 0 in our ones but also in our tenths to show that the 3 is in the hundredths place value column. Now we have 3 thousandths, that's 0 0.003, because the third digit after the decimal point is the thousandths digit, and we have 3 thousandths, so we need zeros in our ones, tenths and hundredths to show that the 3 represents 3 thousandths. Now we have 54 hundredths. The hundredths digit is the second digit after the decimal point, and the denominator of a hundred tells us that when we write the fraction as a decimal, we can only have two digits after the decimal point. We can't go beyond the hundredths place value column. So 54 hundredths is written as 0 0.54. The denominator of a hundred tells us that we can't go beyond the hundredths, we can only have two digits after the decimal point, and that means the 5 gets pushed over into the tenths column. Now we have 54 thousandths. The denominator of a thousand tells us that we can only have three digits after the decimal point, so that's 0 0.054. Because we can't go past the thousandths column, the 5 gets pushed over into the hundredths, but we need 0 in our tenths and 0 in our ones. Finally, we have 543 thousandths. Again, the denominator of a thousand tells us that we can only have 3 digits after the decimal point, so that's 0 0.543. So the 4 gets pushed over into the hundredths column, and the 5 gets pushed over into the tenths column. Now let's take a closer look at some of these questions. For 3 thousandths, that's 0 0.003, because the first digit is the tenths, then the hundredths, but we want to show that we have 3 thousandths, so we need zeros in our tenths and hundredths to make it clear that this 3 is the third digit after the decimal point. Now let's take a closer look at 54 thousandths. That was 0 0.054, but here you'll notice that the 5 is written in our hundredths column, and only the 4 is in our thousandths. 5 hundredths is equivalent to 50 thousandths. That's because we use multiplication to find equivalent fractions. 100 times 10 is 1000, and what we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator as well, and 5 times 10 is 50. So then, we can add the 4 thousandths, and we have a common denominator. So the denominator stays the same in our answer, and 50 plus 4 is 54. And that's why we can write 54 thousandths as a decimal, with 5 in our hundredths place value column. Then we had 543 thousandths, which is 0 0.543. So as a decimal, that's written with 5 in our tenths column, 4 in our hundredths column, and 3 in our thousandths column. But 5 tenths is equivalent to 500 thousandths. That's because we can use multiplication to find equivalent fractions. 10 times 100 is 1000, and what we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator as well, and 5 times 100 is 500. Now, instead of adding 4 hundredths, we can add 40 thousandths. These fractions are equivalent because 100 times 10 is 1000, and 4 times 10 is 40. So now we can add the 3 thousandths, the 3 that's in our thousandths column, 
because we now have denominators that are the same. So the denominator stays the same in our answer and 500 plus 40 plus 3 is 543. So that's why we can write this fraction as a decimal with 5 in our tenths, 4 in our hundredths and 3 in our thousandths. Let's just take one closer look at this middle question, 54 thousandths. We can show that here, but we know that 10 thousandths is the same as 100th. So we can write that as 0 0.054 because if we join 10 thousandths together to make a hundredth, we now have 5 hundredths and 4 thousandths, so 0 0.054 because the second digit after the decimal point is our hundredths digit and the third digit is our thousandths digit. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope that was helpful. If you're a teacher or a parent then please subscribe or go to keystage2maths.com to download resources for this lesson and many more. That's all for now, I'll see you in the next video.